And the art collector world is in South Florida this week, and one of the stars in that annual Art Week phenomenon is not even on gallery walls. Okay, it's non-fungible token art, that's NFT, digital works traded in blockchain, and add to that, Miami, the city looking to be a cryptocurrency capital. And if that is all cryptic to you, I promise you are not alone. Gregoire <laughs> Vogelsong is a gallerist and the founder of Cube Art Fair. Cherise Gray is showing NFT works this weekend. She's an artist. And we are counting on you two to take us through <sighs> NFT, blockchain, the art world. Is it <laughs> hype? Is it real? Is it the next best thing? Ready, go. <laughs> Greg, Good let's, let's start with you, the gallerist. Um, you are selling these works. How did they sell and what, how do you hold them and show them? Yeah, so um, NFTs uh, actually are uh, not being able to be seen by collectors or the general public any other way than on a screen or on an iPhone or any screen really, it could be a tablet, it could be uh, a television, but uh, bottom line is uh, it's really uh, limited. And what we decided to do with Cube Art Fair, Cube Art Fair uh, is uh, in-person physical art fair that had a pivot amid COVID to become a public museum. We are the world largest public museum showing actually artwork in cities like Brussels, Miami, and New York. And today what we did during this week in Art Basel, Miami, is showing uh, the NFT artwork of our artists on giant uh, billboards all over the city in uh, Miami, in Design District, Wynwood, downtown Miami. And we had also a, a 400 feet tall mural projection on the uh, side building of the Intercontinental. Yes, so, so uh, is it, can I just, can I just simplify things? Because that's what we do in broadcast. We try to simplify things. Why can't we just call this digital art? Isn't it just digital? What's NFT? What is fungible or non-fungible? Yeah. Well, w to understand what is non-fungible, you maybe need to understand what is fungible. So fungible is, uh, it could be, for instance, uh, money, you know, do the dollar. Uh, I give you, uh, I loan you uh, $10, you give me $10 back a year from now. It doesn't need to be necessarily the same bill that I gave it to you. You could, you could give me another bill of $10 and I will be totally fine. What is non-fungible is something that you could, an asset that you could not exchange to another asset, for instance, uh, the NFTs. So uh, the non-fungible token is a, a, a token that is related to a, a, a image or videos uh, uh, of, of, from a, a, an artist. And it's a unique token that is uh, guaranteed through the blockchain. All right, uh, hold on just a minute. Let's bring Sharice Gray into the conversation. Sharice, great to see you. Explain hello. To us what, uh, hello. Tell us about your art and, and how is it NFT as opposed to more conventional hanging on the, the wall of the museum art? How are you? Um, good afternoon. My name is Cherise Gary and um, I'm an artist that goes by the name of Unique. And I've been uh, here in Miami Art Week um, celebrating um, NFTs taking over. Um, NFT for me as an artist, it's been something that I've been able to release to my community um, in the form of a digital, you know, a digital art piece or music. Um, and it's been really great to use this as a real life token, um, aside from just a collector's piece. Um, I've used my art to connect with my audience by, you know, supplying in real life perks. So if you bought one of my NFTs, you were able to come to a DJ gig or receive music that I've made for free. Um, and that's been just really dope to be able to, um, you know, make my art an actual token. So, okay, I, I'm so confused. So you're, <laughs> an, you're an artist. Let, let's break it down. You're an artist. Uh, a music artist. Yes, I'm a music artist. I am a DJ, a okay, producer. Okay, so oh, stay with me, stay with me. So your music as, as art is now being shown in what is a, a visual art, contemporary art fair. And yes. you're able to do that because it's digital. And yes. so what makes that different from me buying your art, your music on a digital platform? Why is that different? 
Well, it's different because um, this is actually like, you know, more direct to me as an artist. I feel like it's a great way to really um, eliminate third parties and focus on the community, um, you know, that we're, you know, creating as artists. And um, creating this has been really dope over the years. Um, lockdown, you know, definitely changed the way that we digest um you know art and experience things so taking it into the digital space is just more access for people all over the world yeah uh, gregoire uh, let me ask you i'm kind of an old-fashioned guy i love art i mean last week i was at moma in new york and the week before that believe Beautiful. it or not at the getty center in los angeles saw some fabulous sculpture and painting and so on it's natural for art to evolve uh, so what is it that sort of, frankly, makes me a little reluctant to sort of embrace NFTs? Sort of break it down, make it simple here. What, why is Yes, that? so uh, to, to make it very simple, a lot of people always ask me, why on earth would I even <laughs> buy a JPEG instead of buying a physical art that I could put in my living room? That's uh, what we get a lot. Why? You know? Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's, it's actually not instead, it's also, meaning the people who are looking for a piece of art to put in a living room or, or house or any, anywhere in a physical world will still do it. Uh, in addition, they might buy an NFT as well. But it's the, it, I think what, what the, the, the really the confusion for in the vast majority of the public where everyone heard of NFTs and no one really understand what they are uh, is, is, is you it's very important to understand you're not buying an NFT instead of buying an artwork is is see it NFTs basically as being just another medium for the artist to display their art so medium yes. meaning an artist could have photography there is sculpture there is painting and now in addition there is also NFTs for them to reach a wider audience. Gregor, let me ask you, it's great to make art, to display art, but it's even better, I guess, to sell art. And we see that some NFTs, according to today's Miami Herald, there was a sale of $1.1 million uh, uh, at Art Miami and at Art Basel, a piece sold for 550000 bucks maybe it's in cryptocurrency i don't know uh how about your sales how how many pieces did you sell yeah it's actually uh really incredible uh, lisa Litson, one of our artists at the cube art fair sold a piece for one hundred fifty thousand uh last night and we see also but uh, NFTs are not necessarily uh, always very expensive, and that's for your audience uh, important to know. Uh, you can buy, for instance, uh, NFTs for $150 from Panda Dynasty, for instance, which is another one of our artists. Uh, and um, we are really thrilled about the response. Uh, we've been featuring NFTs in real life, and really that's when the public, you know, each NFT were attached to a, a QR code, so uh, the public could scan uh, the QR code and buy directly from the artist. So um, we're very thrilled about the, about the the excitement from the, the public at, at Basel, Miami. So Cherise Gregoire brought up something that I think is an essential part of this discussion, that NFTs are seen as a way you know, we have a gallerist here, the the middleman, if you will. But it, NFTs are seen as a way to give power back to you as an artist to go directly to the buyer. Is, do you feel that that you feel that empowerment? Definitely, I felt that empowerment. I've been able to connect with people in real life, and they've been to been able to support me um, in real time and not through you know a third party. Um, I've been releasing NFTs with this company called Voice, and they specifically don't work on the blockchain. Um, they do it through cash, and, um, U.S. dollars. So that's a great way for people to get started on their NFT journey and um, people like me to get started in my NFT journey as well. Do you take uh, cryptocurrency and cash? Yes. I think it's beautiful. Do you, pref that do you prefer doing. one over the other? Um, one over the other. That's a really hard question right now. Um, because, you know, crypto has its dips 
<laughs> um, I definitely am still riding with U.S. dollar for right now, but crypto is definitely a part of the future. And as more currencies get made, um, I'm really interested to see what the blockchain is going to look like for artists like me. Yeah. Sharice, explain to us, where do you do your work? I mean, if you are putting together music, uh, where do you yes. do it? And then how do you get it to your producers who then distribute it? <laughs> okay, well, um, in terms of NFTs, I've made my music and if, um, my music an NFT. I'm a music producer. So after I've made a song, um, I've decided to release it with cover art that acts as a token um, to go along with the music. And that's been um, that's been a really great a new experience of me debuting my art. I worked with the graffiti, the Museum of Graffiti this weekend to debut my digital art on screen while I was performing um, the actual song that I made. So um, everybody got to experience the NFT in the physical form as well as just, you know, own, having the chance to own the piece. Gregoire, I feel like um, this, you know, art is to enjoy um, and art is to invest. And I feel like the marketing around this whole NFT step is a is a great big push for what may be an investment boom or bust or both. How, how do you how do you see? Uh, there's no doubt that it's being marketed as the way of the future. Mm -hmm. um, it's such an interesting new medium. But talk about if you would the the real push to invest in something that's kind of unique and secretive and unattainable. Do you see that as a gallerist? Is that is that your next step? Well, here in, in this case, I'm the, the fair founder of the Cube Art Fair, more than uh, the gallery. So we, we really with the NFT, that's what we, we push uh, actually our artists to uh, empower uh, the career uh, through NFTs and reach to a, a, a new audience. So back to your question, uh, there is Definitely, a marketing around it is uh, actually an advantage for uh, the NFT market currently. But the, I will say the link in the physical world exists too. You know, uh, there is uh, sometimes you do uh, exhibitions and are outstanding, then the press is going to talk about, or, or you have uh, artists who are, uh, you know, thinking outside of the box and and get uh, also. Uh, they part the fair share of, of marketing. So it's it's uh, uh, just another way for artists to reach also a wider audience and, and also a new audience. Uh, we realized that a lot of uh, NFT collectors uh, may, uh, doesn't even own a, a piece of art on their wall. Uh, that's also very interesting to see. And uh, what, by reaching with Cube Art Fair this new audience, we hope that by building relationship with this new audience in the future, we will we might actually uh, uh, help them to uh, buy also physical work uh, uh, along the along the road. So that's that's really our job as as Cube Art Face, bridging this uh, physical and and uh, digital uh, world together. Yeah. Well, Gregor Vogel sang and Cherie Scary, thank you for giving us a primer here on NFTs, and we appreciate it. Hope you had a great art week. We know we did. We got it. <laughs> we did too. Thank you so much. <laughs>